Who are the who were the Taino Indians and and where where did they live? Well, the Taino Indians, I, w I wouldn't say that they were. It's the who we are. Okay. Um, it's very much first here. correction right there. There you go, <laughs> right off the bat. Well, the Taino people, or what we call the classic Taino, which were the, the people that Columbus encountered in 1492, mm -hmm. were a, a mixture of a bunch of different peoples that had entered the Caribbean stretching over 7,000 years. And these were the people that Columbus basically encountered. It was a mixture of all these different people that became the Taino. Where, what islands were they? Well, they stretched all the way from the Bahamas to Jamaica, from Cuba, all the way to Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and the Dominican Republic, Haiti. The major Antilles. Okay. And why is it that people, and you can answer this question as well, why is it, all of you can answer this question, why, pe why, do peop why are so many people under the impression that the Taino Indians were extinguished? Well, that has a lot to do with historical inaccuracies. Um, certainly, um, the h history is written by the conqueror, mm -hmm. not by the conquered. And basically, um, since the very beginning, you know, um, before 1492, there were no Indians in living in the Americas, because Indians that the name didn't apply to the, to the people, the aboriginal peoples of, of the hemisphere. As soon as Columbus landed, he called people Indians, then we became Indians. Later on, we became Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and so on and so on. So in every stage of history, we're labeled as something different. And this is how, basically, bit by bit, we, we, come, we get written out of the picture. What is out there in New York that we can see every day that's Taino, and you guys who know can identify, look, that comes, that comes from our roots, that's our heritage. Is that, is that very common, things that you see in the way people dress, in the food that we eat? Is, is that the kind of stuff that you can easily identify? Every single time that you eat yuca, <laughs> that's something that's very Taino. You know, um, the words that we speak on a daily basis, you know, you'd be surprised how many... Our, uh, yeah, our, um, our language is basically is very influenced by Taino um, language. Um, to a greater extent that, that, than most people actually um, understand. Mm -hmm. um, everything from the names of all the... Uh, most of the towns in the Caribbean are of Taino extraction. So it's a very deep uh, influence. I'm going to meet uh, your colleague here, Ilka, and she's here with a whole bunch of incredible instruments that uh, she was playing right before we began. And it was, uh, the sound of this thing is amazing. It sounds like a drum, but it's a piece of wood. Yeah, Welcome but to it the is. show and, and tell, me about, <laughs> tell me about the, uh, the music of the Taino. It is a piece of wood, but it's an instrument. And the name is uh, Mayawakan. This is uh, one of the instruments that, that we have, we have in heritage. And this is, as you, uh, you just said, is made of uh, wood and oh, it's, it's carved on the yes, side. I see. inside. Okay. See, so that makes the sound. And uh, we have what is this the sound? Show, me, show us the sound yeah. that it makes. You, you play with these sticks of rubber, you know, the uh, rubber in the points. Uh -huh. So it makes a very nice sound. If you play this side. It's different, you see? So this makes all the magic, this rubber. Does that more or less take the place of a drum? Or do it's, the Tainos have yeah, drums? Yeah, th this, this is uh, the Taino drum. How much of the Taino music do we hear in our music today? Oh. In, the, in, in Dominican Republic and also in the, the rest of the islands um, in the Caribbean, the, the Taino music was. Um, assimilated with the African music because we were together since the beginning and slaves and then we were together for the, um, the Maroon movement. So these two music blended together and today you can listen to it in the countryside, uh, in the folk music and um, in these uh, parties that are celebrated for the saints, the, the Santero music. Mm -hmm. So you hear part of the Taino music is inside these manifestations. But do, do any of these instruments, like obviously the maracas are still yes, used all yes, over the world, yes. uh, are there any other instruments that are strictly Taino that are still as popular yes, as the Yes, yes, we have the guiro. Of course, yes. So the guiro is, is a Taino descendant also. And uh, it was made um, uh, in Iguero, huh? uh, gourd. Gourds. Yes. See, it's interesting because sometimes we can't tell which ones came from Africa and which ones are original of the Caribbean, which instruments, I mean. Yes, you know, so yes. They, because a lot of them, like the chequere, we had uh, Bobby Sanabria here, the, the, the drummer recently, yeah. and he brought in the chequere, but that comes from Africa, right? Yes, it's, it's, it's an like African a maraca, but it's yes. like this big. Yes. Believe it or not, in, in the Caribbean, there seems to be a trend um, where a lot of things that are indigenous seem to get Africanized, you know, and one of them is the guido. Um, you know, a lot of people there in the Caribbean today, a lot of um, um, anthropologists or archaeologists will say that, well, this is actually an African instrument, um, simply because the Spanish chronicles never mentioned the Tainos playing the guido. Now, mind you that the word guido 
is a Taino word, and that they don't use the guido anywhere in Africa, not even on a, not, neither on a tribal level nor on a contemporary music level. Mm -hmm. And yet somehow the, the, something that we've always known that's traditionally Taino is slowly becoming an African instrument. Mm -hmm. So do you think, uh, Mr. Estevez, that this is becoming, uh, people are becoming more aware of their roots, their culture, more proud of it, more involved? Is this, is this a reawakening that's going on in New York? Uh, most definitely, but it's not just um, amongst the Taino. Um, it's also um, going on throughout Latin America. There's a, a, I would say it's a spiritual need, perhaps, or just that, you know, I guess because of the Internet, people are asking questions. And, um, and you know, definitely there's a, an awakening. Uh, Mr. Estevez, about the, uh, the study, because uh. one of the reasons why we invited you here is because we find now that it's not just in our culture, in our food, in our music, it's, it may still be in our blood. In we our, weren't, our blood. Uh, the Tainos were not extinguished after all. Correct. So I'll tell you, um, from the very beginning, um, like in the beginning of the 1900s, uh, most historians claim that the reason why um, many Dominicans or Cubans and Puerto Ricans um, had certain um, indigenous phenotypes is because of um, Africans and, and uh, Spanish mixed to different degrees, eventually you will get something that looks uh, Indian. Mm -hmm. um, and that, of course, is pretty ridiculous. It's, it's very racist in a sense. Um, so in 1999, Juan Martinez Cruzado, a geneticist from um, Mayagüez, Puerto Rico, from the University of Mayagüez, decided to do a study, and basically what they do, did was... Um, Let's take a break and tell me about the study when we come back. We're learning all about Taino history, Taino culture, Taino food, Taino music. Uh, we're delighted to have you on the program. I cut you off before we took a break. Yes, you did. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, tell me about, you know, what this study that is being done about the DNA test, the well, blood. Uh, I'm sorry, Keith Stephanie. Well, basically, um, they took um, 800 samples from throughout Puerto Rico, um, and these were all based on uh, census records, you know, in different municipalities. And um, to everyone's su um, surprise, even to the geneticists that did the study, 61% of all Puerto Ricans have mitochondrial DNA in, in them. Now, mitochondrial DNA is a DNA that's passed down from the mother to her children, but only the woman could pass this down, um, basically meaning that the mother of the Puerto Rican people was an indigenous woman, okay? Um, now they've actually taken this study to the Dominican Republic as well. They just concluded a, a major study there um, in June with about 500-something samples, and uh, already the results are coming out. And, of course, a lot of historians who had always claimed that the Taino people were completely wiped out are now at odds with this new study. And, of course, um, the way I see it is that history could be manipulated by the, co by the conquerors, by the historians who are writing these things. But genetics is something that you can't really argue with because it's a complete science, basically. And, and, the, and the historians who argue with this, uh, who, what are they saying? Well, what I get from them, basically, is that, um, you know, for people who have built their careers talking about this extinct population and how we have nothing to do with these Tainos, because basically for us in the Caribbean, uh, the Tainos are our precursors, but not our ancestors, basically. Mm -hmm. This is what they say. Uh, um, but now to have a study that says, no, you were probably wrong. Um, so... Just like a, um, a prosecutor who prosecutes someone only to find out later on that DNA will exonerate you, mm -hmm. they don't run to jail to, to, with, with the keys to let you out. They stick with their story, mm -hmm. and that's what basically what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So if you're finding in Puerto Rico, and now you say probably in the Dominican Republic, that so many people have Taino blood in them, mm -hmm. uh, obviously means that it's happening in New York as well, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, so many yeah. Dominicans and Puerto Ricans that are here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah.